Hi, I'm Hallie, and welcome to Project Strange. Lots of questions surround the structures in our world, such as who made them, how they made them, and why they made them. And Project Strange is our attempt to find these answers by understanding structural engineering. In this episode, we're trying to understand tributary areas. But first, let's talk about history. Only three things in life are certain, death, taxes, and area measurement. But what makes area measurement so important? Well, it's certainly simple, for taxation purposes. Bruh. The first recorded use of areas was in ancient Babylon, where they used it to measure the amount of land that was owned by different people. The nature of land ownership changed during the old Babylonian period, between 1900 and 1600 BC. Rather than large institutional fields, smaller fields could now be owned by regular people. But this change had an impact on the way land was measured. Unlike institutions, private landowners needed to measure areas to establish boundaries, resolve neighborly disputes, and of course, pay their f***ing taxes. Babylonians use only the measuring rope and unit rod to measure areas. That would be like if I said today that I was two measuring ropes tall. It's a little more rudimentary. But they figured out how to measure perfect right angles using only these tools. And the Babylonians figured out the Pythagorean rule over a thousand years before Pythagoras was born. Then Babylonians figured out the common rules for measuring different areas. They measured the circumference of a circle as three times the diameter and the area, as one twelfth the square of the circumference, which would be correct if pi was estimated as three. They were also well aware that this was an approximation. More so, one Babylonian mathematical tablet, dated between the 19th and 17th centuries BCE, gives a better approximation of pi as 3.125. Only about 0.5% below the exact value. Whoa! Now I'll pass it off to Peyton with the interview. Can someone open this for me? I have nail polish. Nobody's open. Oh. What is the tributary area? Tributary area is basically the space that something is going to support. So for the column, it's what kind of load and area is above it that it's going to hold up. How do you use it in structural engineering? If we know how much area it's going to hold up, and we know the load on that area, then we can figure out how much load is going to be in the column. How do we use it in our everyday lives? Like, could we, like, measure something as someone who's not an engineer? Like, how do we maybe use tributary areas without thinking about it? Well, we use them all, all the time. So if you have all the floor joists in your house, and we know they're going to be spaced at 16 inches, and we know how much load's on the floor, then you can figure out how much load is in each one of those joists by multiplying by the tributary area, right? If you've ever got to lift anything, everything you're lifting is the tributary area of your hand. So if you're going to balance something in your hands, the tributary area of each hand contributes to how much weight you have to hold. So why did you become an engineer? I really like puzzles, and engineering is just how to solve puzzles properly. Do you like crossword puzzles? I do do crossword puzzles. I don't do the New York Times one. I do the local paper one. Oh. Do you get it right every time? Because you're no. so good at solving puzzles? No, I do it in pencil, not pen. Oh, you don't <laughs> trust yourself? Not even slightly. You can't erase engineering mistakes, though. Well, you can. What if you like build a column in the wrong spot? Well, then you build a second one. You save your mistakes for the crossword puzzle every morning, but you don't make any in your career? I do my career in pen. Gotcha, gotcha. What's your favorite formula? As all good structural engineers know, F net equals zero. Just means things don't move. I think things do move. Well, if your building moves, that's a problem, is it not? That's not a T. <laughs> That's supposed to be a T? It's supposed to be a T. Maybe we should get some red paint We'll here. put some red on that. <laughs> T. Nice. That's crazy. <laughs> so basically, tributary area is the area floor or roof that causes loading on a particular structural element, a beam or a column. 
Tributary areas are a very important part of loading in structural analysis and can come in different shapes depending on how the slab is being supported. It is determined based on the layout of the structural system and the points of support. The SI unit of the tributary area is a square meter, which is considered an SI derived unit. Does your brain feel bigger after this? I know mine does. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to smash that like and subscribe button on your way out. And as always, enjoy the process. Final touch-ups are done. I thought we were painting all the walls blue. Didn't you say red? <laughs>